The concrete industry is focused on reducing its emissions with the aim to produce carbon neutral concrete by 2050, but have been making efforts to improve environmental performance and implement sustainable practices for decades of operations in the province of British Columbia and across Canada. In addition to the emphasis on the decarbonization of our industry, we are collectively focused on fostering the circular economy and ensuring that our products and raw materials do not go to waste. Concrete is a highly efficient product that is essential for long life buildings and infrastructure, with somewhere between 95 and 97% of production ultimately put into service. However, as the most used substance in the world next to water, the remaining concrete that is returned to site creates a large volume of material that must be managed and can oftentimes be space-limited operations. The concrete industry has developed several best practices for managing returned concrete, which may vary from operation to operation, but nevertheless makes the best use of the material to avoid creating waste. A great example of a concrete plant managing returned concrete is Independent Concrete on Vancouver Island, who we visited to speak in more depth about their local operation. Hi, my name is Todd Hansen. I'm the General Manager for Independent Concrete Limited here in Victoria, BC. One of the biggest challenges our industry has faced in the past is what to do with leftover and returned concrete. There's a large amount of waste generated in our industry and the producers have been challenged with what to do with this waste. So a lot of our concrete trucks are capable of hauling 10 cubic meters of concrete. Our average load sizes are typically 7 cubic meters. Quite often, there could be up to three cubic meters of concrete returned to a job site. Hopefully less than that, but it's typical that we can get a couple or one to two cubic meters returned back. One of the things we'll do with that return concrete is we'll put it into our block forms and make blocks, or otherwise known as Lego blocks, and those are sold to the community or to projects to make retaining walls. Another option we have for return concrete, if we don't have room in our block forms, is we can put it through a reclaimer and filter press system. This reclaimer system was installed about five years ago at a capital cost of about $400,000. And the reason we did that was to reduce our waste that we were generating and how to deal with the waste and uh, lower our carbon footprint in our community. Okay, here we are with a unit backed up to our buffer, which will feed our reclaimer. This unit is ready to discharge concrete that was returned from a job site. Okay, here we have the concrete that was put through our buffer system with our return concrete through our ready mix truck. And the buffer is feeding the concrete into the reclaimer. The reclaimer is going to do its job now and separate the aggregates from the slurry water. And we recycle those aggregates back into our concrete production. About 6% of our aggregate usage is from recycling this aggregate through the system. Once the concrete's gone through the buffer and the reclaimer, and the reclaimer separate the aggregates, the slurry that's separated goes into this slurry pit. From here, the slurry water is recycled back into our ready-mix production. 75% of our batch water we use is from the recycled water from this system. One of the other things we do here at Independent Concrete is we retain our runoff water and our recycled water into these settling ponds. These settling ponds are what we use for our reclaimer system, for our truck washouts, and we also use this recycled water in our batch water. Prior to having a reclaimer, such as what we use, and lock blocks, Bruce's would have to dump it on the ground, wait for it to turn hard, and then have to come back in and break it up and haul it away to a waste facility, or bring in a crusher to crush it up and try to find other uses for it in the market. Thank you for coming to visit us today at Independent Concrete. I hope you learned a few things of what we do as an industry to help reduce our impact on the environment and reduce our carbon footprint and the initiatives we've undertaken to reduce and recycle. This is another great example of the concrete industry's commitment to sustainability in British Columbia. Please visit concretebc.ca to download the latest version of our regional average EPD, as well as to learn more about the sustainable practices of British Columbia's ready-mix concrete industry. Thanks for watching.